Well, hey there, guys, and welcome back. On this week's show, some wooden scale models. Well, as a lot of you know, one of the things I love to do is making scale wooden models. And I have received quite a few requests asking for me to do a show showcasing those models. And that is what we're going to do this week. So I figured for each model, we do a little chat on it. We'll talk about where you can get the pattern. If there is one, we will talk about how many hours it took. Uh, hardest parts to make, my favorite modifications, and that sort of thing. And it all starts off with my heavy tow truck build. Well, the heavy tow truck build was one of those that I had a great time with. It's not the type of vehicle that I'm really into, but there was something about the pattern that really appealed to me. Uh, if you're interested in it, it's Toys and Joys pattern number 79. Now, <clears throat> Total hours on this one was at about 90. Uh, I record all my hours that I work on these. Each time I work on the model, I record the numbers, and that way I'm able to know how long each one took. So this one at 90 hours was fairly average. All in all, I would say one of the hardest parts to make of this model were the headlight assemblies. Uh, the angles to get them to meet the fenders and just the process you had to go through for cutting them was one of those that you really had to think about so you don't end up losing a finger. And even though you only need pieces that are this big, you end up having to make them from much larger pieces to give safety or a safe distance uh, between your blade and the fingers. So a little bit of wasted stock doing that, but that's no big deal. 90 hours well spent, mostly, mostly made out of poplar and maple with a little bit of walnut, which seems to be my favorite species when I make these models. This one here sits on the shelf. A uh, funny story about this one is, while I was in the middle of the build, I happened to drive through a parking lot where I saw one of these sitting there. I remember it was a great big red thing. And I went over and I rapped on the window of the driver who was sitting in it. He rolled it down and gave me a funny look. And I explained that I was making a model of this thing and wanted to sort of check around the back for the rigging and stuff so I could see how it all hooked up. And he was more than happy to, uh, to accommodate me. So sometimes building these models is something a little different and you can't just spend all your time in the shop. Sometimes you gotta get out there in the field and do a little bit of research. Well, the next model that I would bring to you today is my transport truck and trailer. Um, this also was a Toys and Joys pattern for the truck itself. It was pattern number 108, and for the trailer, it was pattern number 109. What a build. <clears throat> I don't even know what to say about this thing. There's so much to say about it. Um, this was an extensive build pushing 234 hours. And a huge part of that was some of the extras that I put into it that are not on the plans. And that was, of course, the load, which was the skids of cinder blocks. Now those cinder blocks, I cut individually on the scroll saw 1,050 cinder blocks. That's a lot. That is a lot of blocks and that is a lot of work. Um, I'm going to tell you that equals drilling 2,940 holes with 2,490 interior cuts and 1,050 table saw cuts to separate the blocks into their individual pieces. That put together with making individual skids for them and then adding straps to make it a little more authentic, even though it's not regulation strapping sort of thing. It all came together for one heck of an amazing project, even putting um, stenciling on the yellow straps to make it that much better. Hardest part to make of all of this, you know what, every model has one part that is your nemesis, and for me it's steering wheels. 
Um, I don't like buying any parts for these models. I make them all myself and the steering wheel has got to be the hardest part to make and with all the models I've done, I still have not perfected it. Now this one here, one of the nice things I like is some of the detail that I put into it, even to the point of using boards that were somewhat rough cut instead of sand boards. They were scrap off cuts that I cut down. I use those for the plank of the trailer to give it a little more authenticity. Guys, this was a load of fun. 234 hours well spent and my favorite part of all of it was the extras that I added like the load of bricks. Well, it wasn't that long ago that I made this project to enter in the local fair. And uh, that's my backhoe build, which also is from Toys and Joys, and it is pattern number 71 if you're interested in it. Uh, this one, much like the heavy toe, which I said was an average at about 90 hours, this one clocked in at 92. And it's mostly if not completely, maple and walnut. Um, maple is a great wood to work with with these models because it's strength. It's strength. When you start doing things like drilling out the centers of dowels and that sort of thing, it really gives you a little bit of extra forgiveness when things twist or shift, whereas pieces don't break that easily um, as long as you take your time. One of the favorite parts of this build, for me anyway, uh, is the pistons. The, the pistons that are on the outriggers and that, that control the, the backhoe and the shovel, um, these things are awesome. They're a pain in the neck to make in order to drill center, like dead center of that dowel. But once you take your time and measure and, you know, check and double check and make sure everything's square and you start the drilling and that piston goes together, there's a, a sense of satisfaction with that that I just can't explain. It's one of those things that you have to feel for yourself. Challenges on this project. I'd have to say the biggest challenges to make on this one was the bucket for the uh, the bucket for both the backhoe and the front shovel. Um, they are segmented builds. In other words, there is a whole bunch of pieces that are cut pretty much exactly the same, and then they're all laminated together. Uh, and then sand it flush to make the final product. And then the sidewalls are added after that. Believe it or not, it's, it's a pain in the neck to clamp. It's hard to sand. It was difficult to shape. But you just got to have the patience and the perseverance and, and work through it. And eventually you get a fantastic product like this. Either way, it was a load of fun, and the rewards for that, of course, is it took first prize in the local fair, and I, I was happy about that as well. So, there you go. Uh, at 92 hours and pattern number 71, the backhoe. Now, pattern 127 from Toys and Joys is uh, one that's a little closer to me. It has a little more of a personal interest for me. Uh, and although they call this the Jeep, what this is, is actually a Jeep JKU, uh, which I happen to own. Now, the difference between this JKU and my JKU is that mine is modified for off-roading, which is one of my hobbies. Um, so this was a personal build in which I wanted to duplicate my rig with the custom bumpers and the winch and the lift, etc., etc., even right down to some of the interior features that I have in mine. And because of that, this build took 150 hours to complete. Um, the pattern here is, is fairly simple. There's a lot of shaping and there's a lot of fun. I built mine mostly out of walnut because my truck is black, so walnut was the closest thing I got, and you know, without having ebony and loads of it, I really couldn't make an actual black one, and I don't like the idea of painting wood. So, 
Favorite parts on this build? Well, I'd have to say one of them has to be the working winch in the front that has a little dial on the side that you can use your thumb to wheel the winch in. Um, that was a load of fun to make. Uh, as well, I'd have to say that some of the other features and the biggest challenge and the hardest things to make on this build for me, and it's my own fault because they were custom, uh, and that was the front and back bumper. The angles to cut on them and the bush bar on my front bumper and that sort of thing, it was just a pain in the neck. And uh, this door, or sorry, these plans don't allow for that sort of thing because, of course, they are reproducing a stock unit. Um, there was a ton of trips back and forth, back and forth, uh, out to the driveway to take measurements and try to scale things. And that was a bit of a, an aggravation for me as well. But one of the things that I really wanted for this was I wanted the doors to open. That was a big one for me. And of course that meant coming up with custom little tiny hinges and that sort of thing. So total eye strain to make some of the parts for this, a total pain in the butt, but honestly, it was 150 hours of well-spent time and I loved every minute of this build. Um, even went so far as on the finish for this one that I masked off the tires and the entire interior, which only got some Danish oil and then the rest got a high gloss spray on the outer parts. Uh, it really gave for a nice uh, effect. And you know what, I even had to take it out to the garden and do a little photo shoot like I was, uh, like was off-roading with it. So there you go guys, at 150 hours, uh, the replica of my rig. Well this next one is not from Toys and Joys and it is one that I had an absolute blast with. And the story goes that there was a fella online that did model builds as well, and him and I decided that although he was thousands of miles away in, uh, in the United States, and I was here in Canada, we would do an online build together and post our results step by step on a woodworking forum. And that build was the Conestoga Wagon build. Um, it's actually a plan from Woodcraft Plans, and it's plan number 152010. Now, I didn't even know these plans existed uh, until this fella contacted me and said, hey, you want to try these out? And then I purchased them from there. This thing is a behemoth. It is like five feet long, including the tongue. It's almost three feet high, and uh, it's 212 hours it took me to put the whole thing together. The extras, oh, I, you know what, I don't know how much I can say about this. There was so many processes through this, larger parts. There was nuts and bolts that held things together. There was levers that worked in, wooden levers that worked in conjunction for a working and functioning brake handles. Um, wood bending for the hoops. And then of course the extras. Uh, the extras were just over the top. Uh, this fella and I basically fed off of each other online. And uh, I sewed the canopy that went over it myself and just everything from a miniature hollow bodied fiddle and guitar to a uh, rip saw, a two man rip saw. Um, there was a tar bucket, uh, pots and pans, uh, a barrel. There was crates of dynamite and other things. The old style crates with the little rope handles. Um, feed bags, grain bags, that I made custom stencils, sewed bags out of burlap, and then stenciled on my own grain design. <laughs> this build went over the top, even went so far as to bearskin rug. <laughs> A lot of fun, guys. 212 hours and 212 hours well spent. The two hardest things of this build 
were number one, the bending of the hoops. Having never done any wood bending at that point in time, it was one heck of a learning curve. And I'm telling you, uh, with those hoops being made out of oak, that oak really loved to split. I ended up having to make my own kind of uh, steam bender that I took over the kitchen and oh my goodness, it just went crazy. Um, but it was a load of fun. And the second hardest part about this model, I have to say, bar none, and my wife will agree with this, is where the heck do we keep this thing? So this poor wagon keeps getting moved all around the house, finding a different home, it seems, every couple months. But honest to goodness, what an enjoyable project, and it really opens the door to your imagination being able to make all of the extras that I threw into this build. Well, pattern number 98 from Toys and Joys is their military jeep and trailer. And as a guy who loves jeeps, this one here was a load of fun to make. Um, very Back then, the jeeps were very clean lines. There wasn't too many curves. Things were pretty much straight and square. And those angles really kind of, believe it or not, uh, caused a bit of a challenge throughout the model because, of course, every angle has to be, has to meet the other ones and make a clean joint. And if there's one thing you can say about Toys and Joys patterns is they're not really the best at having a full set of measurements there. So it's a good thing that the plans are on a one-to-one -one scale so that you can scale off of them and take those measurements. But it did provide a challenge. Uh, plan number 80, uh, 98, how many hours? 97. And this as well was an online build with the same fella that did the Conestoga wagon with me. Um, we had a load of fun online with this and again working off of each other and bouncing ideas back and forth but I think my favorite add-on with this one like absolute favorite add-on and it was a, a load of fun and what a challenge to make and that was the rag top for this thing I can remember posting online because you're doing step by step online I can remember posting um, when I first started at the top and the week ended with just the block of wood and it was kind of sitting on top this big ugly block of wood and people were thinking oh my goodness what is this clown doing and then the next week it followed through that I was working on the model and the shaping started happening and people started to see how it came together and it worked out really well um, I didn't have a pattern for it. I had no idea how it was going to work out, but in the end, it all came together with 97 hours under my belt for it. Big challenge for this one, big challenge was doing the tires. <clears throat> Those uh, classic military Jeep tires, they're not like making tires on most of the other models. There's a lot more shaping involved. And a lot of it is a jig with router work, which causes problems because that spinning bit likes to spin the tire. And I ruined more than one tire because I didn't have it tight enough in the jig while I was routing. So if you're gonna make this project, be sure to tighten that jig as best you can. I do have a tutorial on the channel for making those tires. And you know what, I think I'll post the link to that below if you're interested in seeing the process. Feel free to drop in and check that out. But either way, a load of fun on this one, loved it. Uh, made almost completely out of poplar uh, and walnut, of course, for the tires. But oh my goodness, what a blast to make. And if you're going to try any pattern, ah, man, you've got to try this one. Th this is awesome. Well, Toys and Joys pattern number 115 was the one that first brought me to figure out how to make cinder blocks. And that is the boom crane build. Um, this one here presented challenge after challenge after challenge. Uh, 183 hours to make the boom crane. 
but I loved every single minute of it. Now, the extras with the skid and the chains and that sort of the thing, the chains were just some old cheap dollar store necklaces that I ended up painting black. And the bricks, of course, and the skid, I made those myself on the scroll saw. But those weren't the biggest challenges. The challenges were not in the extras. The challenges were in the model itself. The big one, well, you know what, they're all big ones. That boom. That boom was absolutely crazy. The angles that were there to make all of these pieces all fit together the way that they do. And there is no way around it. There is no way to do a shortcut. I guess if you really wanted to cheat, you could cut the whole thing with a scroll saw out of one piece of wood, but what fun would that be? The challenge of these models is figuring out how to make the pieces and actually making them. So those angles of that actual boom were crazy and uh, man, it, you almost, well, you can see I got my hair pulled out because of it. The other part of the challenge here was the rigging. The rigging of this crane, making all those little pulleys and getting the ropes wired in just such a way as to make it so that it actually worked. Um, what a challenge. What a challenge that was. Um, you really had to, because how do you portray that on a drawing? How do you portray that on a print? It's very difficult to portray how the ropes go. And Toys and Joys did their best job of doing that, but it was still a real challenge. You had to follow along with your finger and try to figure out where the ropes went. It took a little bit of trial and error, but I finally got it. But the biggest challenge of this build, bar none, are the tracks. Those tracks are crazy and you have to be dead accurate. I spent, I, I can't remember if it was 14 or 16 hours, I believe it was 16 hours making one set of tracks. And what happened was, is my holes that were drilled were off by something ridiculous like one one twenty eighth of an inch when I measured. But that was enough to make my track twist. Therefore, 16 hours down the tubes and the track didn't work. So that track ended up as kindling, custom kindling I might add, in my wood stove and I had to start the whole process over. So if you guys are going to be making uh, a boom crane or any model with tracks, be sure your stuff is accurate. It's better to take some test pieces and drill and check all your measurements to make sure that you're drilling perfectly than to rush through it, make all your pieces, and then you've got a twisted track like what I had. The biggest problem for me was drilling through the walnut with such a small drill bit and applying too much pressure. I wasn't allowing the drill bit to do the work and it was deflecting, causing just the slightest bit to be off and that is what caused the problems. But you know what, it was a learning experience and every mistake in the shop is nothing more than that. Uh, it's nothing more than a learning experience and as long as you take something away from that, then you've lost nothing. So there you go, 183 hours and uh, I loved it, it was fantastic. And unfortunately guys, that's all the time that we have for this week's show. Uh, I'd love to be able to bring you the rest of the models, but I fear that the show would be too long and I would lose your interest if I haven't already. So for now, we're going to put a stop to it here, but don't worry. Uh, there's a lot more to do next week, so we're going to carry on with this in next week's show. Guys, if you haven't already, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Click that bell so that you don't miss notifications of future episodes of the show. I hope you've enjoyed this program so far, and I hope you're going to join me next week when I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesdays.